The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to the learning circuit. Now, I don't know about you, but I like candy, and I have a problem with people trying to come and take my candy without me knowing. Therefore, I'm going to build a candy thief alarm. Here, I've got my candy box. Inside, I'm gonna put an alarm built with a buzzer, a photoresistor, and a transistor. When the box is open, the photoresistor will sense the light, sounding the alarm, and hopefully scaring off whoever's trying to get their hands on my candy. Now, this circuit is pretty simple, but I wanna break it down to make sure you understand how and why it works. We'll start with the buzzer. Now, not all buzzers will work with just a straight DC current. Some require an oscillating current to sound, so I made sure to choose a buzzer that will work with just DC. This buzzer has an operating voltage of three to 24 volts, so it will turn on with just three volts, but the more voltage it's supplied, the louder it will get, up to about 12 volts. We'll run the power to our buzzer first through a transistor. This will make it so that rather than the volume of the buzzer being more analog, turning up and down depending on the amount of light that the photoresistor is sensing, it'll be more digital, turning on and off. When choosing a supply voltage, I need to remember to factor in the voltage drop across the transistor. So if that's 0.7 volts, I don't wanna choose the minimum three volts that the buzzer could take because that means that it would only get 2.3 volts after the voltage drop. So I need to choose a higher voltage. Now I've already tested voltages for this buzzer and I'll save your ears and tell you that I found that six volts works pretty good and that's a nice even battery voltage. Now onto our digital switch, our transistor. I have selected a 2N4401, which is an NPN transistor. Here's the pinout from the datasheet. It has three pins, the collector, base, and emitter. The collector acts as the input pin for the main voltage, the emitter as the output, and the base is our control pin. If we turn our power on, nothing happens. If you remember from our transistor episode, we need a secondary voltage at the base to allow current to flow from the collector to the emitter. This is usually around 0.7 volts depending on the transistor. If I connect the base to ground, nothing happens because both the base and the emitter are connected to ground. There's no positive draw to make the current flow through the base. If we hook the base to the positive of the power supply, It's getting more than the minimum voltage at the base, turning the transistor on, allowing current to flow through the buzzer. Now to make our circuit light activated by adding a photoresistor as our sensor. Now this is a one mega ohm photoresistor, but let's see what its functional ratings are. If I shine a bright flashlight on the photoresistor, it barely has any resistance, close to only 100 ohms. At natural room light, it's around 600 ohms. If I cover it up simulating complete darkness, it's upwards of 150,000 ohms. To use our photoresistor as a switch, we need to control when our base gets enough voltage. To do this, we can add a resistor along with our photoresistor to create a voltage divider. We'll put our photoresistor between positive power and the base. Then we add a resistor between the base and ground. We know that when the photoresistor is in the dark, its resistance was around 150 kilo ohms. In the light, it was fluctuating between 100 and 600 ohms. When in the dark, we want the base to be pulled low to ground. So we need a resistor with a value lower than the photoresistor. When it's light, we need the base to be pulled high to the six volts. So we need a resistor with a value higher than the photoresistor. So we need a resistance somewhere between 600 ohms and 150 kilo ohms. I'm gonna use my resistance substitution box to see what works best. 10 kilo ohms is a pretty common resistance value. So let's start there. We're in the dark, we're good. Mm. The sound is changing a little more than I want to, so let's try one kilo ohms closer to our 600 ohm value when it's in the light. So I've got my one kilo ohms, power back on. That's a little more on off. I like it, we'll use it. Great, so here's what our final circuit will look like. 
Remember, your buzzer can go on either the collector or the emitter side of the transistor. I've also added a switch so I can turn the entire circuit on and off. You can also use this circuit to make the circuit turn on when it's dark rather than when it's light, like with a night light. In that circuit, the photoresistor will be on the ground side of the base and the resistor on the power side. In this circuit, you want the base to be pulled high to power when it's dark. You'll want a resistor with a slightly higher value. A 10K ohm resistor does the trick. Before I start soldering, there are some things I want to consider when arranging my circuit. I want to make sure I can access my switch. Now, it's up to you whether you put your switch on the inside or the outside of the box, but I have older brothers and I know how clever candy thieves can get, so I'm going to put my switch on the inside so it can't easily be disabled from the outside. I also don't want to arouse any suspicions by having wires coming off of the box, so I'm going to use a battery pack that can be concealed within the box. Another thing to consider is the placement of your photoresistor. Now, you can solder it directly to your perf board and then strategically place the whole circuit so that it can access the light. Or you can add wire leads and then place the photoresistor exactly where you want and then hide the rest of your circuit in the box. I think I'm going to add wires to mine. <laughs> well, I think that worked pretty well. I'm happy to finally have a way to know when the guys are trying to steal my candy. Can you think of another fun way to use this circuit in a different project? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!